Welcome back to our study in the book of Exodus. Today we're chapter 5, verses 15 to 21. Let me read it. Then the foremen of the sons of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? There is no straw given to your servants, yet they keep saying to us, Make bricks, and behold, your servants are being beaten, but it is the fault of your own people. But he said, You are lazy, very lazy. Therefore you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. So go now and work, for you will be given no straw, yet you must deliver the quota of bricks. The foremen of the sons of Israel saw that they were in trouble because they were told, You must not reduce your daily amount of bricks. When they left Pharaoh's presence, they met Pharaoh and Aaron as they were waiting for them. They said to them, May the Lord look upon you and judge you, for you have made us odious in Pharaoh's sight and in the sight of his servants to put a sword in their hand to kill us. So back in Exodus 2.23, the, the Hebrews cried out because of their bondage. They cried out to God and God heard them. He heard their prayer. But what do we have going on here? After going to Pharaoh to complain about how they're being treated, they find out that Pharaoh ordered. Pharaoh accuses them of laziness and, and refuses to relent from his basically almost impossible commands. And as the Hebrew foreman pass by Pharaoh and Aaron on the way out from Pharaoh's presence, they see them and they say, look, you know, you guys, you guys are the source of our trouble. It's your fault. You're putting a sword in their hand to kill us. So far from being delivered, Moses and Aaron seem like they have brought this new crisis. Uh, instead of delivery, it's, it's uh, all this trouble coming down and people are being beaten and physically rough treated. And they look upon Moses and Aaron as the cause of their crisis. Now, the cause of their crisis is not Aaron and Moses. The cause of their crisis is the oppression of the Hebrew people by the Egyptian state. Remember, God's promise in Genesis is to increase his people, to bless his people. Pharaoh's uh, plan from Exodus chapter 1 is, we're going to press down on these people. We're going to reduce these people. We're going to basically engage in a, a, a kind of genocide here. We're going to reduce the population. You know, we're going to actually kill. We're going to actually murder some of these people. So in doing that, Pharaoh positions himself and his people against God. Cowardice always increases oppression. Resistance uh, means deliverance from oppression. And, and God is trying to get a spirit of, of resistance going here among the people. So God isn't working independently of his people. He's enlisting them in the process of their own deliverance. And it's the same for us. God enlists us in our process of deliverance. He provides the strength. He provides the opportunities. He works providentially for us, but he enlists us to be part of the deliverance program. You know, he does the, lift, the heavy lifting. He does the saving, but it remains true that we have a, a very important part in the plan. We are in covenant with him, and he will deliver us according to his great mercies. But it's not all just one-sided. We are in covenant with him. I mean, there's, a, there's things that for us uh, to do. There's things for him to do. And now, as we look here, the, the Hebrews have sunken low. Their faith is at a low ebb. But as we will see, and here's kind of the main piece here, God's going to use this process of their deliverance to stretch their faith. And that's the way he works. So there's a very important lesson here as we keep on working our way through Exodus. See you next time.